This week on Beacon Web News, we get to take a look at the public policy lecture with Jeffrey Tubin. Greylock Works had a festive holiday market and BWN was there to capture it. We also will see the Campus Center takeover with NRHH. Then we check out Harlequin's annual review and the seven day forecast. We also get to see Mayor Alcombright's last tree lighting in the city of North Adams. That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. Hello and welcome to the November 29th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Maggie Allen. First, let's send it over to Julia Tixera at BWN's Weather Center for a weather preview. What can we expect for weather this week, Julia? This week, it looks like winter is coming, as we can expect to see temperatures drop to 25 degrees. But I'll have more on that shortly during this week's full seven-day weather forecast. Maggie? Thanks, Julia. The seventh annual Michael S. and Kitty Dukakis Public Policy Lecture featuring Jeffrey Tubin was held Thursday, November 16th. The high-profile senior analyst for CNN and staff writer for The New Yorker spoke on the Supreme Court and its new members. BWN's Karina Matera has more on the lecture. It is sometimes hoped, it is often hoped, it is sometimes even believed that the Supreme Court represents a refuge from the partisan differences, the polarization that is so familiar to us in Congress or the race for the White House. Well, I'm here to tell you, for better or for worse, that's not the case. This year, the annual Michael S. and Kitty Dukakis public policy lecture featured Jeffrey Tubin. Tubin is currently a senior staff analyst for CNN and staff writer for The New Yorker. He is known in the country as one of the most esteemed experts on politics, media, and the law. He's known for writing an analysis on many popular controversial cases, such as his book on the O.J. Simpson trial. Who are fighting for? See, this is why one of many reasons why I, you know this case dwarfs fiction. I mean, I you know here you couldn't write this that a guy gets acquitted because basically because the jury thinks the cops are have, have out, out to get him and got him. In his lecture, he covered many aspects. First, he suggested an important fact of the Supreme Court was that there are five Republicans and only four Democrats. The Supreme Court is closely divided, but with a real Republican advantage, uh, just as the Congress is, and certainly just the way our race for the White House wound up last time. And to see why this moment in the history of the Supreme Court is so important, I think need to go to the, back to the last time the Supreme Court was not so equally divided. The last time this wasn't divided was the mid and late 1960s. Tubin discussed some of the Supreme Court cases that changed and challenged the law back then. In 1965, Griswold v. Connecticut was the first to recognize a right to privacy. A year later, in Miranda v. Arizona, it recognized the criminal procedure by producing the Miranda rights. In 1967, Loving v. Virginia struck down laws that were against interracial marriage. He strained how 1967 wasn't that long ago and that it took that long to figure out that these laws needed to change. He also talked briefly about early justices such as James McReynolds and William O. Douglas. Tubin expressed how when he first got into learning about the Supreme Court, he expected to divulge in all the fights and all the contention and how certain people couldn't stand others. To his disappointment, he learned that that was never the case. For example, William O. Douglas, he thought, wasn't admired and liked during his time period, but in fact was because he took off a workload from the Supreme Court. In Tuba's interview at our very own MCLA College Roundtable, he summarized the justices for us. The justices are very protective of the institution. Now, they don't, uh, they, you know, that doesn't mean they like every result of every case. Far from it. But it is still a, uh, you know, th th you, that's what you get from, from the justices. You get a kind of, you know, respectful hearing. Tubin insisted that the most important political development of our lifetime has been the evolution of the Republican Party. He compared the Republican Party that existed when Nixon was president to the one in today's world and explained that the one in Nixon's time was unrecognizable now. You could tell that because whenever Nixon had appointments for the Supreme Justice, he would be moved to the right as the 70s were just as liberal as the 60s. 
From there, Tubin thought this didn't change until Ronald Reagan was president in 1980. He thought the Conservative Party was finally back as a part of the country in the Supreme Court. This went on throughout the rest of the 80s. If it happened then, it could still happen now. So we should always be paying attention, as Jeffrey Tubin would suggest. For Beacon Web News, I'm Karina Matera. Tonight in Murdoch 218 from 6.30 to 8.30, make sure to catch the last showing of the global film series of the semester. The film Fire at Sea is a documentary that looks at the life of some migrants that crossed the Mediterranean Sea during the European migrant crisis. On November 18th, Greylock Works hosted its very first festive holiday market, a celebration of local food and design. Samantha Niskern was there for more. Sam? I'm at Greylock Works for the festive holiday market. Right now it is busy bustling with people. And you can see everyone is getting ready for the holidays, trying to get some shopping done, trying to pick up gifts for everyone they can while enjoying the live music, having some food, and participating in some workshops. Saturday, November 18th, Greylock Works and North Adams opened their doors for festive a holiday market showcasing local grown food, handcrafted jewelry, and other handmade gifts. One booth sold fresh hard cider. An owner, Peter Mitchell, shared what makes his holiday drink stand out from the others. I grow apples and I turn them into hard cider every winter. So we grow them all summer, we pick them in the fall, we press them in the fall, and then we ferment them all winter. It takes about six months. We use only the apples we grow ourselves. So it's tree to table cider. Alice Boudreau, who works at the Mount Williams Greenhouse, was also in attendance, selling wreaths, succulents, and more. I work for Mount Williams Greenhouses, and we sell all our product that we sell at the greenhouse. Wreaths, kissing balls, swags, poinsettias. We're terrific. And everything is local. We harvest all our greens locally. We make everything right here in town on State Road, and um, everything's fresh. We stand by our product, and we're always available. MCLA senior Brody Torres came to the market and was impressed by the food and the atmosphere. I'm having a great time. I had some pizza, which I'm so excited about. It was delicious. I think events like this bring the community together. It brings out the arts. It brings out the commercial aspects of the community. Just all the good stuff together, one place. Senior Drew Weiss shared how he found out about the event. Oh, I heard about it from my school, and uh, it's great to see what they've done with the place. It looks great how they repurposed it. Weiss continued, explaining what presents he picked up for his family. Yeah, I got my mom a great ceramic bowl, and I'm uh, looking at some pictures for my family. Mitchell went on, praising the market for its success. But this was just so beautifully presented. It's a great collection of vendors. The fact that you've had live music, you had spoken word, you had um, demonstrations going on and Ramble Wild with their climbing rope. This is perfect, some for the kids, some for everybody here. Hopefully next year, Greylock Works puts on the same market because it was truly an event that the whole community came together and really seemed to enjoy. Thanks, Sam. North Adams Common Folk has created a listening room series, Shut the Folk Up, and the first performance of the series will be Jake Clare and Izzy Heltai on December 1st. There will be a $5 potluck dinner at 5 p.m., and music starts at 7. Seats will be limited, so make sure you get your tickets. You can purchase your tickets by emailing wearecommonfolk at gmail.com. Gallery 51 is hosting their annual 99 cents art show tomorrow, November 30th, at 5 p.m. The art show will have pieces for sale from local and regional artists. Prices range from 99 cents to $99, and the art will be available to take home the day of purchase. For more information, visit Gallery 51's event page on Facebook. On November 15th, the National Resident Hall Honorary, NRHH for short, hosted their annual Campus Center Takeover. Clubs and residence halls flooded the Campus Center from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Victoria Weichel was there for the inside scoop. Vic? I'm Victoria Weichel with Beacon Web News, and today I'm here in the Campus Center where a bunch of MCLA clubs have taken over the Campus Center. Campus Center Takeover is hosted every year by th the National Resident Hall Honorary. This year, 30 clubs have participated in this year's takeover. Night of fun, clubs set up tables where students can come, learn about new clubs, enjoy snacks, play games, and win prizes. MCA's Algretto's even had their own version of musical chairs with live music. <laughs>
We asked students what their favorite part of the campus takeover was. I love Campus Center Takeover. There's so many, all the clubs that come out here all have some type of event that's interactive and it really gets you to partake in the club and also learn a little bit of information about them. So it's awesome. Um, I don't know yet actually. I haven't gone around to all the tables yet. I've been just rotating around with my clubs, but hopefully I can find stuff. I mean, some of the fun stuff like the Allegretto's do, the musical chairs is gonna be awesome. It's my redemption year. I'm gonna get it this time, but we'll see. Great, I love it. It's amazing. It's the most fun ever. I'm very caffeinated right now. I am on the e-board of the Political Science Club, but I'm also involved with the Allegretto's and uh, the York Production Club. But for the Political Science Club, uh, the e-board that I'm on, so I'm gonna plug them. Uh, we have some amazing stuff over there. We got prizes. We have flag prizes for everyone who's coming, and we have almost impossible trivia. And it's actually almost impossible. I don't know the answer to most of those questions, and I helped write it. As you can see, it's a bunch of fun for students and clubs, and if you missed out, you can always come back next year. Tomorrow, November 30th, Mass Mocha has a discussion on the Are You Really My Friend exhibit. The five-year project sought to capture photos on Facebook, friends, taking us through communities and backgrounds of the photos on display at Mass Mocha. Come discuss the photos with the maker of the movie, Robin Greenspun. The event is at 5 p.m. and tickets can be bought at the door or online at massmocha.org. Seats are limited. With a new band and arrangement of songs, Lonnie Holly will also be at Mass Mocha. Holly debuted his first album in 2012 at the age of 62, after making home recordings for over two decades. The show will be on Saturday, December 2nd at 8 p.m. Tickets are available on Mass Mocha's website and $10 for students, 12 for advance, and 18 the day, the day of. Mass Mocha will also be free for North Adams residents on December 4th through June 2018. To verify that you are a resident, you must bring your, your ID and your or utility bill. To find more details about Mass Mocha events, you can visit massmocha.org. For their second show of the semester, the Fine and Performing Arts Department will be putting on a production of Tartuffe. This classic show was first performed in 1667 and will have a modern twist with a lifestyles of the rich and the famous theme. Tartuffe will be performed in Venable Theater on December 1st and 2nd and on December 8th and 9th at 8 p.m., along with matinees on December 2nd and on, and on December 10th at 2 p.m. General admission is $15 and students, for students it will be $5. Recently, Harlequin held, held its annual review, featuring pieces from different shows like Rock of Ages, Matilda, and many more. BWN's Claire Harrison was there to get more on the show. This year, MCLA's musical theater club, Harlequin, hosted their 15th annual fall review. The show is entirely student-run, and it incorporates all genres of musical theater, including numbers from West Side Story, Matilda, Hamilton, and even High School Musical. I got to ask some of the performers and directors what their thoughts are on Harlequin. So directing, it's a lot more than I expected it to be, but I love it because in my piece, I made sure that everybody's a family and I just feel like everyone's so close in my piece and I love it. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been challenging, of course, but I've enjoyed it and I'm definitely gonna direct next year. So this is my last year in Harlequin, which makes me sad because I've always loved being in the review. It's my favorite. I feel like the club has really helped me improve like as a performer and as a singer, so that's really nice. Uh, as a person. As a person. <laughs> Harlequin prides itself on being an all-inclusive club that accepts everyone who auditions, no matter their skill level or experience. Um, it's just a really good opportunity for people that like being around other people, and like even if you're not super comfortable, you can just like go out and do your thing, and like it's really fun, and sometimes we give you pizza. It's so much fun. I mean, you don't even really have to sing, know how to sing or dance. Everybody's just so loving and they allow you to do whatever you want. You just like bust a move on stage. The review is every fall and make sure to check out Harlequin in the spring semester as they put on a full length and entirely student produced musical. Thank you, Claire. I know I'll be going to the spring performance. As we move towards the holiday season, the days are getting colder. Let's head over to Julia for our seven-day forecast to see what's in store for us. 
Hello again, I'm Julia Texera with this week's full seven day weather forecast. This week, not much sun will be shining as Thursday will be partly cloudy with a high of 43 degrees and a low of 34 degrees. Friday looks much the same, only the high will be 42 degrees and the low is expected to drop down to 25 degrees. So I would make sure to pull out the heavy jacket from the closet and to keep warm over the weekend as Saturday and Sunday are also expected to be chilly. Monday will see a slight rise in temperature as the high will be 45 degrees and the low will be 30 degrees. Tuesday will look to be the warmest day of the week as the high will be 48 degrees and the low will be 35 degrees. Finally, Wednesday there will be showers as the temperature drops back down with the high of 43 degrees and a low of 30 degrees. That's this week's seven day weather forecast and for Beacon Web News, I'm Julia Texera. Thank you, Julia. Looks like those winter temperatures are right on time. On Thursday the 23rd, North Adams shined a little bit brighter as it held its annual tree lighting in the center of town to mark the arrival of the holiday season. Samantha Niskern was the first hand witness. Wednesday, November 22nd was the annual tree lighting in North Adams. When the sun went down on Main Street, hundreds of people gathered around to watch the larger than life holiday tree light up the night sky. In his final weeks as mayor, Richard Alcombright noted that this would be his final time officiating the tree lighting before bittersweetly handing the responsibility off to mayor-elect Tom Bernard. One, four, three, two, one, Santa! Hot beverages were sold in a tent to help keep passerbys warm and a visit from Santa Claus helped boost energy levels as children could hardly contain their excitement. With the tree up and holiday lights on, Main Street has once again turned into a winter wonderland, just without the snow. Thursday at 8 p.m., the debate club is holding discussion at Serenity Parlor on Ashland Street. The topic will be on civilized discourse. For more information, check in on the debate club's Facebook page. On Monday, December 4th, the MCLA Wind Ensemble will be holding their annual winter concert. The event is free and will be held from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in the Church Street Center. Come see what the student musicians showcase as they've been working on it for all, the whole semester. That's it for this week's B week episode. Stay up to date with all things BWN. You can follow us on social media. As always, thank you for watching. I'm Maggie Allen, and we'll see you next week.